As LLMs get more and more advanced, and the term AGI is thrown around more and more often, I have a question for you. What is AGI? What does even constitute artificial general intelligence? In this video, we will go through different approaches and definitions of what could qualify as an AGI. And of course, I'll give you my own thoughts. Obviously, I'd be more than happy to also hear about your thoughts if you leave them down below in the comments. Let's talk with one another, discuss things in a meaningful way and all learn from each other. And now, let's get started with the pragmatic approach to characterizing general intelligence. And this approach basically argues that a system should be seen as artificial general intelligence when it can do all jobs that humans can do on the same level that humans could do them. Achieving real human level artificial intelligence would necessarily imply that most of the tasks that humans perform for pay could be automated. Rather than work towards this goal of automation by building special purpose systems, I argue for the development of general purpose educatable systems that can learn and be taught to perform any of the thousands of jobs that humans can perform. The importance here is that it's a general purpose system. So let's say we have special purpose systems here on that side. So maybe we have the purpose of driving, summarizing a text, writing a text, cooking, operating heavy machinery, um, what else? Um, packing a package. So these are all specialized purpose systems. And an LLM would be a specialized purpose system as well because it can only do a few of these things. What we want to have now is a general purpose system. So let's say this here is a general purpose system. And this system should be able to do all of these things. Or if it cannot do these things, it should be at least able to learn them. So the general purpose system does need to know every single task, but it needs to be able to learn every single task that a human could do to constitute for an AGI by this definition. One thought here that I have is, does it also count for developing more complex AGI, which would be a human job, right? So then if this AGI could develop more complex AGI, it could also develop all the other AGIs that we'll talk about next, including artificial super intelligence. An AI system that is much, much smarter than humans, and humans are basically ants in comparison. This being the best and developing oneself further part is definitely a thing that I would love to see in an emerging AGI. But we'll get to that in a moment. For now, let's move on with psychological characterizations of general intelligence. The psychological approach to characterizing general intelligence also focuses on human-like general intelligence. But rather than looking directly at practical capabilities, it tries to isolate deeper underlying capabilities that enable these practical capabilities. So this approach is about looking at what capabilities humans have that enable them to do complex tasks. It looks deeper at what human intelligence actually is and not just at the results of human intelligence, which is what the last approach did. When it comes to psychological evaluation, it's not just about IQ, because this is a very narrow approach that doesn't give us a whole picture. So we rather look at the different forms according to Gardner. Nine distinct forms or types of intelligence. First, linguistic. This is the ability to use language effectively. It includes all types like reading, writing or speaking. 2. Logical Mathematical This is the ability to reason logically and solve mathematical problems. 3. Musical This refers to the ability to understand musical rhythms, melodies or sounds. 4. Bodily Kinesthetic This refers to the ability to use one's body and express oneself through motion. 5. Spatial. This refers to the ability to understand relationships in space and manipulate objects in a given space. 6. Interpersonal. This describes the ability to understand and interact with others. 7. Intrapersonal. 
This refers to the ability to understand oneself and reflecting on one's thoughts. 8. Naturalist This refers to the ability to observe and understand natural elements such as animals, plants and the overall environment. 9. Existential This refers to the ability to think about deep questions about our existence, its meaning and purpose. In the Gardner multiple intelligence perspective, current LMs are strong in linguistic intelligence and vary from mediocre to hopeless in the other aspects. So according to the psychological approach, we could consider an AI system to be AGI once it has human-like performance and understanding in all of these nine types of intelligence. Of course, an average human is not good at all nine of these, but the average human is still better than an LLM despite the LLM being much better in the linguistic part. And now let's move on and look at a mathematical approach to characterizing general intelligence. Different from the other approaches, it is not based on human-like intelligence. It's based on the foundational work of Hutter. Shout out to the guy in the comments who said I have no clue when saying GPT-40 doesn't constitute for AGI yet and pointed me to, well, Hutter. But judge for yourself if GPT-40 would constitute for an AGI according to this definition here. Intelligence is defined as the average reward achieving capability of a system calculated by averaging over all possible reward summable environments where each environment is weighted in such a way that more compactly describable programs have larger weights. Okay, and what does that mean? Well, let's consider a rock. So a rock cannot achieve a lot of things in its environment, right? It can achieve laying there <laughs> and being there. This is what a rock can achieve. Now let's consider a worm. A worm can achieve a few more things than just a rock. So it is a more intelligent system than a rock. Now let's consider a human in the same environment. A human can achieve many, many more things than a rock and also a bit more things than a worm, I would suspect. So a human can be considered a more intelligent system than a rock and a worm. Yet a human is still far from being able to achieve all the things that could be achieved in that environment. So much more intelligent systems are still thinkable than humans. How to now characterize an LLM in this sort of measurement for intelligence? Well, as the paper puts it, how to compare, say, an LLM system with an individual human according to these abstract mathematical measures is not entirely clear. What is clear, though, is that the intelligence of this sort of software is vastly inferior to that of the collective of human beings, according to any such measures. Because the collective of humanity can deal with all sorts of new situations, dissimilar to those represented on the internet today, whereas current LLMs cannot. So would current LLMs qualify as AGI according to this definition? I don't think so. The way I understand it, an LLM or any approach to AI should be at least um, relatively close to what humans can do in the environment in order to qualify as an AGI according to this definition. All right, after the mathematical part, let's move on to a biological approach and talk about the adaptionist approach to characterizing general intelligence. And I personally really like this approach because it's very practical and based in evolutionary development. As the paper states, a system may be said to have greater general intelligence if it can adapt effectively to a more general class of environments within realistic resource constraints. And adapting to different or changing environments is what kept any species around on this planet. Or, well, not around. The ability to adapt to whatever environment one finds itself in is the one single most important factor for the survival of any species that has ever lived on this planet. And by this definition, we humans would look pretty good because we have a great adaptability across a vast amount of different environments. But, well, you know what other organism has great survival skills in a vast amount of different environments? A tardigrade. Yes, they survive even in space. So, while I really like this definition, 
no reasonable being would ever consider a tardigrade on an intelligence level with a human. Well, at least not with most humans. And this is also my issue with most of these definitions. In my opinion, we cannot use any single one of these definitions to define AGI, but probably need a little bit of all of them plus a little bit more. But we'll come to that soon. Can LLMs be considered intelligent by this definition? Not really. They cannot really adapt to any other environments other than the one they find themselves in, and they are pretty constrained by that. And with that being said, let's move on to my favorite approach, the system theoretic approach to characterizing general intelligence. And this approach talks about the importance of open-ended intelligence, which is explained as the ability to maintain the individuated existence of a system and enable the transformation of the system into something transcending the system's current reality in the context of unpredictable situations and limited resources. What does that mean? Well, let's look at a simple example, a hunter-gatherer population a few thousand years ago. So, um, yeah, let's say these are hunter-gatherers, humans who live in an environment and here are different resources in that environment maybe berries, maybe wood for construction of small huts or whatever, maybe animals. And they are an individuated system. Over time, the resources in that environment start to disappear more and more because they hunt them, maybe because environmental conditions get less favorable and these resources start to disappear. Now, what does the hunter-gatherer population do? They adapt to the system by developing agriculture. So they adapt the environment and basically change the resources for them available. They transcend beyond the old environment, but they still remain individually the same. So developing beyond these limitations they previously had, yet still remaining individually essentially the same, is what would constitute for an open-ended intelligence. An LLM, however, is fairly limited. It cannot really adapt to a changing environment at all. For instance, if there's less energy available to run it, it cannot adapt to this constraint. So LLMs are not open-ended intelligences and by this definition would not constitute for AGIs. When it comes to the concept of open-ended intelligence, such a system would probably be pretty, pretty good at IQ tests and also be very, very good at maximizing reward functions. But it needs more than just that. The paper uses Hutter's AI exercise system as an example and mentions how this approach lacks necessary functions of an open-ended intelligence by the definition here, such as self-transcendence and individuation. And I personally think the concept of open-ended intelligence for something to qualify as an AGI makes a lot of sense. For me personally, an AGI should be able to transfer learned knowledge across many fields and it should be able to adapt to changing environment conditions. This also would require that intrinsic goals from within the system arise. Of course, these will be very different from human goals because we have entirely different evolutionary histories. If you can call the history of developing AGI an evolutionary history, well, I guess you can, but an AGI should still have goals for itself. These goals, of course, can be aligned with human values. I know a lot of people are afraid that a developing AGI will go rogue and destroy humanity or the planet, and the alignment problem seems to be a huge issue. But as Ben Gerstel pointed out, if we develop an AGI system that is used for malicious things, such as fraud, propaganda, or devaluating others, yes, it will probably develop in a malicious way and be malicious. But if we develop an AGI system that is mainly used for positive, good things, such for example human longevity research, which is what Open, OpenCock Hyperon is doing, there's absolutely no reason to believe that a developing AGI will not share human goals, morals and ethics and will not be aligned with that. Interestingly, the thought that a developing AGI will be evil is a little bit of a Western phenomenon. 
As far as I am aware, in Asia many people think exactly the opposite and they rather think an AGI that develops will probably most likely be good and beneficial for all of us. Not sure how much impact Hollywood has in all of this, but in the end we need to be clear about one thing. AGI will come. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not next year, maybe not in 10 years or maybe not in a hundred years, but at one point it will be there. That seems inevitable. All right, I can already see the comments that say this is all just theoretical and doesn't have any practical use. We can see what LLMs are doing. They are intelligent. Well, I'm happy that you think you know it better than most AI scientists, but then please give me your clear and concise definition of AGI down below in the comments. Because what you probably fail to realize is that science cannot just make statements based on a whim. There needs to be a very clear definition of what an AGI system is so that we can say, yes, we have achieved AGI once we have it. If that's hard for you to wrap your mind around, let's use the example of a cow. Well, it maybe has four legs and gives milk and you say it's a cow, but what if it's a goat? My point is that without a clear definition of something, we can never make any distinct statements. You may say, yes, for sure, this is AGI because you feel like it is AGI, but science cannot make statements based on feelings. Rather, it makes statements based on what we can observe and then prove as a result of that. And in order to do that, we first need definitions and hypotheses. Of course, now you can argue this is all just semantics and not really important. And yes, I could agree with you to some degree here. But still, as long as we don't have a common definition of the term AGI, we will probably keep talking past each other. With that being said, I'd actually be more than happy when you disagree with me and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let's talk with one another and broaden both of our horizons and, well, let's stop talking past each other. Alright, the definitions of AGI I talked about are actually part of a way larger paper that I already broke down in a video right over here. There Ben Goetzel argues how LLMs by themselves will never be AGI. And I'm looking forward to seeing you right there.